Thanks very much, Darren. Um, Clarissa and I have a long history of doing double acts. And so she started by asking, where will the future take us? At some point during my presentation, I will tell you what is the future we want. And um, I'm not going to give you a PowerPoint, because you'll be getting PowerPoints out of your ears by the end of this week. Um, but I just wanted to um, relate to you some information on the JMP uh, process, that, uh, with, which actually is a WHO UNICEF process, on using the JMP as a platform for the um, development of targets and indicators post-2015. But then I also want to, since I've just uh, sat through three, uh, three days of um, UN water meetings, I also want to put that in the context of what happened uh, after Rio plus 20 um, and what the ongoing processes for uh, sustainable development goals are. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the coordinator of water sanitation and health in the WHO. And so together with Sanjay, um, who has just left the room, I think, um, I'm responsible, and with Tessa Wardlow and UNICEF, we're responsible for the joint monitoring program. Um, and also, of course, my unit is also responsible for the UN Water Commission's global um, analysis and assessment of sanitation and drinking water. If you have a bone to pick with that program, Bruce Gordon is the responsible officer and he's sitting right there. Um, WHO is not a partner of SWA because our legal counsel doesn't allow us to sit as partners with governments who are also our bosses, so we are an observer, but we very much support the initiative and um, contribute to it. Now, in the JMP strategy for 2010-2015, um, we um, set several goals which ne we needed in order to intensify the work leading up to the end of the MDG period. But we also included this idea of having a role uh, uh, of providing a platform for the formulation of post-2015 targets and indicators. Um, JMP, as you saw from Clarissa's presentation, has um, a long history. There's lots of lessons that have been learned and there's a, a long his institutional memory. Um, so we felt that we were, uh, you know, an indicated um, entity to t undertake this. And obviously, uh, looking back now, we were quite sort of ahead of the crowd in, in taking up this particular challenge. Um, so in May of last year, May 2011, WHO and UNICEF, hosted by the German government, organized um, uh, a large consultation on post-2015 monitoring of water and sanitation in Berlin. Um, it was an auspicious time because just a year before we had seen a um, flurry of um, resolutions, first in the General Assembly and then of course in the uh, Human Rights Council, um, recognizing the ex access to safe drinking water and basic sanitation as a human right. I was a bit surprised that you didn't build that into your um, into your story about monitoring, because these people, of course, are now keen to start monitoring as well, and they have quite a, a shopping list of issues that they want to see, but their monitoring is typically something that will be taking place, I think, mainly at the national level, because they're the ones who will be holding national governments accountable for meeting the obligations under this human rights arrangement. Um, so the meeting, the consultation in Berlin, um, basically reviewed the landscape, which you just also again now saw maybe even in even further detail, the monitoring landscape as we know it. Um, it did consider human rights criteria and development criteria together. It considered some of the other ancillary issues, capacity building for monitoring, monitoring at different levels, economic dimensions, um, and then it developed a roadmap for the formulation of global targets and indicators. It was very clear from the beginning that we were not going to touch the actual goals because that's a very political issue, but targets and indicators are um, in the technical realm that we felt we could be working on. So um, we established four working groups and we um, uh, had Guy Hutton, who some of you may know, the uh, health economist, uh, join us to sort of on a part-time basis coordinate this effort. Uh, four working groups on drinking water, sanitation, and hygiene as the sort of technical pillars, and then one on equity and non-discrimination. These are the human rights people who sort of work transversally through these three others to make sure that uh, principles of um, human rights would be integrated into this process. Um, the drinking water group was led by um, 
by water aid and by IRC in The Hague, um, and in a sense had um, quite a, an easy outlook because they were going to look, of course, at um, quite well-defined already issues, uh, continue on access issues, and then probably looking at the global level where you can only do so much, um, water quality issues within what would be a plausible goal. We didn't know what would come out of Rio plus 20 by then. Um, the sanitation people, um, led by Eddie Paris of uh, WSP, but joined by Clarissa, um, worked, of course, obviously on access to facilities, but it also took on board the concerns about what happens after the facilities are used. In other words, where does the uh, management of human waste come into the picture? Um, the hygiene group was, uh, of course, a new um, item, and um, they were led by USAID, by Mary Wenger, um, who um, focused, uh, of course, first on getting a, a large shopping list of possible indicators, but then uh, quite rapidly turned that into a, a short list, which now includes hand washing with soap, menstrual hygiene, and food safety. Food safety is a bit of an odd one out, but that came on the list originally because we also wanted to look at the impact of wastewater use um, on, in, in agriculture um, and the health risks that are associated with that. And I think that as it is now, it's probably the most likely to drop off that list. And finally, the equity and non-discrimination people met several times. All these groups met several times, had telephone conferences, commissioned papers, so it was quite an intensive process. Um, and the human rights principles were, of course, uh, reflected, all the criteria that they have of access, availability, quality, affordability, reliability, sustainability, there's a whole list there. Um, and from these discussions, it was clear that there's still quite a, a gap between the development community and the human rights community on issues of scale, um, on what targets are priority targets, and also of the type of evidence that people use in their monitoring. Uh, while in the traditional monitoring that you've seen, we rely mainly on scientific evidence, we found out that relying on legal evidence is quite a different story. So there's still a lot to be bridged in that particular area. But they've come up with a list of principles that the other groups should adhere to and make sure that equity and non-discrimination are included. Um, we now have a consolidated document, an outcome document, on the JMP website. That's www.wssinfo.org. Um, and we will present that on the, in the monitoring session on uh, Thursday morning during the week. All right, now, um, what are the next steps in this? Because that's an important thing maybe to consider. This week, as I said, we have the Thursday morning seminar. Um, we will also start this week the broad circulation of the consolidated document, and we've created a platform on the JMP website where you can submit your comments, which will then be validated and taken on board um, in the further process. We will also, um, later in the year, in November, uh, have a measurability meeting, which will be hosted by UNICEF, because it's very easy to come up with many indicators and targets, uh, but we have to get back to reality and see what the survey and statistical experts say of what is really measurable um, at the global level. And, the debate that many of you have heard of after we published the JMP report about whether or not we actually met the um, target, uh, the drinking water target in 2010, is an example of how you get, get into trouble if you leave the target definition and the indicator definition to politicians rather than to technical people. Okay, um, <clears throat> then. Uh, there's also going to be the SWA partners meeting. We have talked with Sanjay about the fact that if the um, uh, landscape is going to be discussed there and the future architecture of monitoring, that could again also be uh, something that feeds into this process. And we then foresee a second consultation in The Hague, uh, 3 to 5 December, where we will pull all this together and come up with a consensus, we hope, on um, what future targets and indicators could look like. Now, I must um, put this in the context, as I said, of what happened in Rio. Um, before Rio happened, I uh, blissfully ignored all these things around sustainable development goals because I felt it was only distracting from the technical work we were doing. 
But we now have the document, the future we want. Um, I don't know whether it's the future we all want, but that's what the people in Rio thought that we wanted. And um, this Rio Plus 20 launched then a process of uh, developing sustainable development goals, building on the MDGs, but measuring um, in order to measure the collective development process. I know you want me to stop there, but I really have to say it because it's, 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 very, it's maybe not all that good news, but as soon as, so now that we know about it, we may actually be able to react quite early. Um, obviously, the good news was that water has a section in this um, report that came out of Rio. It talks about universal access to safe and clean drinking water. It talks about the uh, adequate sanitation, human rights, wastewater management, floods. Uh, but then water is also mentioned in the sections under food security and agriculture and under ecosystem integrity. And so um, the idea is, of course, now that we have to have a sustainable development goal that pulls all these things together. I think that thinking that we would have a water and sanitation sustainable development goal is um, pie in the sky. So the, um, the three processes that have been initiated, one is the high-level panel that the Secretary General established with three heads of state or government heading that. There is the MDG reporting process that has been going on and that will now lead to a summit that will talk about post-2015 indicators and targets and goals. And there is also um, the 30-member open working group, an intergovernmental group of um, countries that have been selected through the um, UN Economic Commissions for one reason or the other. Um, and that will also submit its report on country perspectives on SDGs. So it is uh, expected that, these, um, that the SDG for what that there will be an SDG for water, but it will not be exclusively for drinking water and sanitation. It will definitely be less development oriented than the MDGs have been, but much more what they call intergeneration, intergenerational and societal. And of course, it will also address the human rights issues. Um, of course, we, we know that in the end, the WASH targets and indicators will be the driver, so we will carry on with our work on that area. Uh, but I must say that we shouldn't forget also that even in the time of the MDGs, nobody really knew what the, the goal was, which was environmental sustainability, but we've all been working towards this water and sanitation target. So the target is really essential. Finally, I can tell you that I've been requested by UN Water, which is the um, interagency collaborate coordinating mechanism in the UN for water. Um, to coordinate their process of developing a proposal for the SDG on water, uh, which will be channeled through UND's DESA, UNSCAP, or some other channel, to the Secretary General for his consideration. Um, this is not an assignment you would normally accept unless you're suicidal or unless you're um, six months away from retirement, so that's why I accepted it. Um, and so in the end, the key question then is what can be the role of SWA in this? Um, first of all, I think, um, as you've seen, SWA has been a strong partner in, in engaging in the monitoring of enabling environments, and that's the work that we've been doing in GLASS, and that has been feeding into the high-level meeting. Um, secondly, I think we can now see whether SWA can also support political canvassing uh, to see whether WASH properly is reflected in the formulation of the Water SDG, so through the links at the country level partners at the country level. Uh, we would look at SWA as a potential partner for transition from the technical to the political process and how governments can buy into the new targets and indicators that we're developing on the JMP platform. And finally, um, contributing to the development of a more harmonized monitoring landscape to become operational after 2015, as already discussed, and feed that into the consultation in The Hague. I think that's what I had to say. Thank you very much.